Hello. My name is Helen Bouchard, and I'm a painter. I just finished painting a self-portrait from life using a mirror. This was a spontaneous project. I didn't do a carefully structured drawing on paper beforehand like I do with many of my other paintings. I simply was overcome with the desire to just make it happen and get going while that feeling was fresh. A lot of my best work ends up being created in this spontaneous way. It was playful and experimental. As a result, it turned out to be one of my most successful self-portraits yet. I find painting to be so relaxing, but also stimulating. It's a very intellectual activity. I love solving problems and figuring out the puzzle. I like asking questions, like how does the light fall? How does this value relate to all the other values around it? What relationship does this line have to that line? But most of all, I love observing the beauty in nature no matter what the subject. The most sustaining part of my practice as a painter is in each moment of active engagement and being deeply focused on a project that is both challenging and exciting is to me being fully alive. I really enjoyed documenting the process of this project and I hope you enjoy it too. Even though I didn't do much planning beforehand and this was a pretty spontaneous project, I do always give some thought into the overall effect that I want to reach for when it comes to color and value. I chose to key this painting in a low intensity red, which means all the other colors in the painting are purposefully chosen in order to support that red, therefore giving the painting harmony. Much like a concerto in music where a soloist is supported by an orchestra. So the two main colors that I chose to support my red soloist were a dark and low-intensity blue and yellow-green. Since this was painted in January, a hat and soft turtleneck hints that this took place in winter. In addition, my birthstone is garnet, which is a dark red like the hat. I gain a lot of my inspiration from the old masters, and the self-portrait has been a vehicle for many artists over the centuries, not only to document their likeness as they age, but to experiment with different costumes and lighting and poses without having to hire a model. Self-portraits were hung in an artist's studio as an example of their skill and status. Louise Elizabeth Vigie Lebron's painting, Self-Portrait in a Straw Hat, created quite a sensation, and she ended up painting many more women, including Marie Antoinette in a straw hat. The tone that I put on my canvas is made with transparent oxide red and ultramarine blue. The underdrawing was done in raw umber, and now I'm about to put lead white on my palette, as well as yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and ultramarine blue. And now I'm about to get started on my first pass in color.
working from a mirror is difficult. I'm always moving and I'm never in the same spot twice. So it really exercises my memory. I have to look at what I see, observe it, memorize it, and then step up to the easel and apply it. This is excellent because I don't always have that same discipline with other projects where I have the luxury of standing in one place and staring at a stationary still life or a model who stays on the stage in one spot. All this practice working from memory forces me to sort of lean on all the practice I've done from life over the years and what I've learned from all that practice um, about the anatomy of the human head as well as the landmarks of the face and the proportions. Creating a self-portrait is more about convenience than it is about vanity. Um, I'm really my most joyful when I'm studying from the live model, but it's really time consuming and also really expensive to hire models. So this working from a self-portrait really um, gives me the opportunity to get the necessary practice that I need working from life. Um, but it also gives me the same amount of satisfaction and joy to study my own face as it does studying a stranger's face or a friend's face. In whose entourage was the famous Lady Hamilton, or rather the soon-to-be Lady Hamilton, whom the artist painted many times. As the painting evolves, it expands and contracts. In the search for truth, I'm constantly learning about what I'm seeing through the comparison of relationships around the face and head. Every individual looks unique, so it takes a million tiny adjustments to create a true likeness of a person. To quote Vasari in the lives of the most excellent painters, sculptors, and architects, he mentions Titian, who constantly returned to a picture 
and went over it again so often that the meticulousness became apparent, an extremely judicious, fine, and astonishing manner which makes his paintings look very lifelike, being executed with great artistry, while the effort that has been expended on them remains hidden. Thank you.